we need we we need cool uh, backgrounds as well, Thomas. We we gotta have matching backgrounds. Also. We're innovating all the time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Welcome everyone to another one of our videos about the Azure Stack Partner Solution video series. Again, I'm joined by Tiberi Radu from the Azure Stack Hub team. I hope he's doing fine again. And Tiberi, who I'm going to talk to today? Hello, Thomas. Hello, everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk with a Caribbean partner. Um, they are a uh, managed, well, they're a service provider offering a managed services uh, offering to their customers. Um, as we've seen before in our series, we have, from an Azure Stack Hub perspective, we have various partners across the, the globe. Um, offering different levels of service. Um, that means they are either partnering with other ISVs or they are offering a managed service themselves that the customers will use to build a solution on top. I'll let Blair to, to, to go through these. Awesome. Thank you very much, Tibi. Um, we'll switch over to Blair and Blair. Um, first of all, welcome to our video. Um, secondly, I hope you're doing fine and like I just talked with Tibby a little bit about it. He explained a little bit our the company, but can you go a little bit deeper on who you are and also about talk a little bit more about the company itself? Sure, and uh, good morning both of you and uh, good to see you. Thank you for having us. Um, so uh, SALT is a Caribbean, as, as uh, Tibu uh, mentioned, is a Caribbean-based um, Microsoft partner. Um, as you can see by our cool backgrounds, um, we won Partner of the Year this year. Uh, that's three out of the four last years. Um, and what we have is the we're the only ones in the Caribbean offering a multi-tenant um, um, Azure Stack offering. Um, we've had it up and running for about a year and a bit now uh, in Cayman. Bermuda came online uh, right in the middle of COVID. Actually, the equipment arrived like two days before lockdown, and we we built our Azure Stack offering in Bermuda during lockdown. I think it was the first time anyone had done it all remotely. Uh, that's from HP and Microsoft, and, and of course ourselves. And uh, we just uh, we're happy to say that we just ordered equipment for Jamaica. So we have a quite an extensive roadmap on rolling out throughout the Caribbean, and um, we we work in that partner ecosystem. Um, clients can obviously come directly to us, but we found that there was a niche for um, companies such as ISPs or um, uh, service providers to be able to um, or want to consume Azure type services within the Caribbean for data residency and, and, and uh, low latency uh, concerns. Um, and uh, so we took the initiative of building these out. Uh, we do not focus just on the IaaS. I know a number of people you know, initially have rolled out uh, Azure Stack Hubs, kind of using just the IaaS services, we've chosen to go down the path of of offering the full suite of software. So uh, from right from one end to the other. So um, we've been going, like I said, the company is about four years old now, and uh, yeah, that's that's who we are. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Not only the location sounds pretty cool, but also the the solution you're offering. Um, you mentioned uh, like you're working in a partner partner ecosystem, right? Um, can you a little bit explain a little bit more like um, who your clients are and or your partners are and like how they work with you? Sure. So um, we uh, are off the offset, as you, as many of us know, uh, each stamp um, has its own interface, its own provisioning engine, and uh, we realized very quickly that we would have to create uh, our own API to be able to manage this as we plugged into the ecosystem. Um, our clients are everyone from distributors in the US. So we've got IncomeX who have come online and you'll be able to, within the next couple of weeks, be able to provision right through their, their interface, their platform um, services with us all the way down to um, you know, some of the ISPs. We have them here in Cayman and Bermuda, Jamaica. That we're working with where they wanted to add value to um, to their clients. Uh, I think the big thing around this was that you know a number of them already have cloud platforms and one of the, 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 the big selling points for us is obviously security and compliance around Azure Stack. It's a closed system, right? It's not your traditional private cloud where it's a hypervisor you can just reach up and theoretically and you know touch the VMs and do as you wish with them. It's closed, right? Us as the provide as the the, um, the the solution provider don't have access to that data, right? So the security and compliance, I think, is a huge thing that um, even when we are approaching some of the ISPs and, and partners that already have a cloud platform, they could see the benefit that there was a, areas where there were clients that 
would want to consume these types of services. So it was, it was complementing their offering rather than competing with their offering. And I think that's one of the things really to, to, important to highlight. Okay, no, that's that's uh, that's a good thing to know and like how it all fits together, right? Um, so obviously this is about Azure Stack Hub, and what I usually ask is like, why did you choose Azure Stack Hub, and how does it fit in your solution? Um, that is one thing, but then on the other other hand, I also want to ask you, why does do do your customers choose Azure Stack Hub? Um, so, and, and Vic's been with me for throughout this journey. Um, I'm the owner of the business. Vic is uh, our technical director. Um, and, uh, you know, we started this journey with a view of being a Microsoft shop. Down the Caribbean, we have a lot of places that are uh, jack of all trades and nothing against them. That we, you know, I was in that, I've been in that business for many years before I went into uh, solely being a Microsoft shop. We are, um, so we built out this solution thinking and knowing about Azure Stack uh, was coming. We thought we were going to be able to. Uh, install it on our own hardware. So we built out S2D data center with you know many, many servers and we played around with it. And that was our first version of cloud that we had. I think that had a lot to do with why Microsoft chose us to be able to, um, to, to give us the exception. Because in the Caribbean, you need an exception for every single location you go. We have to write to Microsoft. We have to prove that with a business case. Uh, they do interviews. It's, it's not just a, I want to purchase it and you're, you're on your way, right? We have to do some, some, a lot of justification to them. Um, and uh, but we we knew that all along we'd heard about Stack and it come in. We're like, this is the perfect cloud solution for us. It's Azure, but down here, right? Same interface, same CSP billing model, same marketplace. You know, the APIs, all these kind of things, the DLL, the versions. It's it's all the same. And we we really wanted to. Um, we had a vision from day one on on extending uh, Azure outside of the the regular data centers into our regions, right? No, that that is awesome. Like again, I love that, and, and that is also why I'm one of the main reasons we have Azure Stack to is actually expand Azure, not just in our own regions, but to regions where it's just not uh, available, right? Um, so we were talking a little bit about about the the the, the why, right, and how it fits in. Um, I'm also super interested in like, okay, what kind of like um, platform or how are you using the platform to deliver value to your customers? Yep, so I'll, I'll take that one on Blair. As Blair mentioned, we started off by running our own cloud platform, very common in the region. And um, one of the big things we were doing with those Azure Stacks was taking clients who had a heterogeneous type design and saying, well, let's give you a bit of standardization. So with the Azure Stack, these customers can't leave these regions for a variety of, uh, of reasons. It could be data sovereignty, regulatory control. So what we wanted to do was start that journey by moving them out of there onto the Azure Stack. So IaaS was a big part of that initial roadmap. That's a lot easier said than done. So, you know, right in the beginning, you know, we, we, we came up with our own data box solution. We stole shamelessly from Microsoft's portfolio. And um, so we could help our clients to take those big data workloads that they've got sitting in their data centers. We could help them to securely ship their data um, using our backup solution. Take that, bring it into our data center, give them high speed access to the Azure Stack and then be able to upload their virtual machines and their data in a time that's reasonable, right? I mean, the internet is great, but it's not great when you're trying to move 10 or 20 terabytes worth of, of infrastructure into a data center. So IaaS was absolutely the, the start of our journey. And of course, they had that high fidelity. So those those clients who, who could move minor workloads out into public Azure, they were already aware of how to get their ARM templates and running, a Terraform running, how to get those things going. So really that was the start of our journey doing a, a lot of IS. The other thing that Salt we started doing from the very beginning was offering virtual desktop solutions, which is actually really interesting with the Azure Stack. So. We, we eventually built up those uh, virtual desktop environments that were uh, to almost dozens, if not a hundred or so uh, concurrent a day. Um, and so when we went to Azure Stack, that was another thing that we really excited about was the ability we could take what we knew about that and give clients the uh, Windows virtual desktop experience on our Azure Stack 
but using the session host model. And we did that. So we, we found ourselves in that place where we had clients, here's your application servers, here's your file servers, all running on IaaS. Now we give you the Windows Virtual Desktop experience, of course, uh, through the power of Azure Active Directory. And uh, we have clients who we sell, we were one of the first partners in the Caribbean to sell the uh, E5 licensing suite. So we could give them all the security of Azure Stack, SOC 2 data center, absolute Azure Stack security. Now they've got their tenancies, they've got their virtual networks into there, they've got their infrastructure, bring the virtual desktops in. And we really saw that explode with, with COVID, unfortunately, as more people had to work from home and they were able to scale those out so quickly on the Azure Stack platform within their regions for low latency. And then as we've moved forward, we've obviously now finding that we have clients who are very savvy and they, but they still have that problem. They can't leave these geos for whatever reason. And sometimes it's even just a DR concern. Like a hurricane comes through, takes the telecommunication, links with them. They still got to operate, right? So this really opened the door for us for the PaaS solution. We're very, as an organization, we've always been very aggressive with uh, keeping up the ASDKs, the Azure Stack Development Kits. So we were always trying to uh, stay on the edge of that. So now we've gone in and put our SQL solution in which is actually extremely popular. So we have um, this issue now with clients reaching uh, uh, end of life on their 2008 R2. Thanks to Microsoft, appreciate it guys. Uh, we now have the option to extend the, the patching and the service life with the Azure Stack, which we've done. And we're offering PaaS SQL which um, is the cheapest way to consume SQL uh, compared to trying to run the licensing models yourself. Um, so that just a small insight into, you know, kind of how we're starting to leverage this product from a technology technology perspective. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, to be honest, that's very awesome. I, there are like many, many different things you've just put out there, yeah. which, uh, <laughs> which I, I really love. I, I mean, starting with uh, like just migrating the IS and bring IS features, right? But then also remote desktop. Uh, and uh, like the, also, I like that you mentioned the offering with Windows Server 2008 and 2008 R2, which customer, if they move it to Azure or also Azure Stack Hub, uh, they get free extended security updates uh, for these. So, and again, you mentioned also then the modernization part. So you're not just taking them and just leaving them at like at just virtual machines, right? You also help them to modernize and, and go forward. So a bunch of different uh, things and awesome things here uh, I just took out and I'm, I find it super interesting. Um, with that, that brings me to another very important question, but sure. I'll let you first uh, go and add something to it. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to talk about a little bit more about how, about the PaaS solution. So we had a, a, um, a customer, we're under NDA with that customer, so we'll talk about it in a very general term, but we had this customer approach us, and they're doing amazing things with IoT. And um, they have a model that they've built out for themselves, and, um, that's, and, they, and it's been doing the job, but it's becoming very expensive for them. So I'm very proud that, you know, with the Microsoft's roadmap, we now have all the benefits of IoT Hub, you know, uh, all the web apps uh, features. Um, and so with this client, uh, we're very proud that they're actually developing their next generation platform directly on to the Azure Stack. So, I mean, it's not often that you get to look at the Azure reference libraries, the architecture patterns, and actually apply those in, in places like this. So we're very excited that we're going to actually have a client who's going to have all these telemetry sensors um, uploading directly into the Azure Stack where we're doing the hard computation. And then a lot of that data will then flow up to Azure to make use of Azure Search and cognitive functions. So it's a really advanced use case. Um, and I mean, this is something that's really exciting because uh, Salt actually had a case study uh, where we worked with a client uh, that was doing artificial intelligence and we helped them to achieve that platform in public Azure. So for us, it's really rewarding to not only have these solutions being built now uh, for clients who can achieve public Azure, but those who are now going to be in the Caribbean as well. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I, I love that you're bringing these Azure services to where the customer actually need them, right? Uh, and again, many, many different services and I love how you built that whole cloud journey, if you will, and help customers in whatever state they are and whatever actually they need uh, on that. Uh, that brings me up with like a question which I want to ask you. So during that uh, journey and obviously also the journeys you see with your customers, like where they are in, do you want to share like any like lessons learned or like something you, you, you learned during that process and that journey? 
I, I think I think there's a couple things for it. I think as as part of as part of us learning about the Azure stack, I just we had a lot of tremendous support from our partners and Microsoft to do that, and we've overcome a lot of that. A lot of that was learning barriers. Um, but when it comes to our actual, uh, the most important people to us who are our partners, these are our resellers. These are guys who are making the journey possible for their clients in their geos. Um, what we've really learned is that we need to listen a lot more. And so what's really exciting is they can come to us with um, their, their particular use cases and we can apply those uh, in, within the Azure stack. For example, you know, what are they doing with networking? And we've had to learn a lot about how to integrate people into the Azure stack and a lot about networking partners. So in the beginning, we found that in the marketplace, for example, there wasn't a lot of, um, um, there were very few handful of, of telco or, or um, how do I put this, networking providers that had their virtual appliances in the marketplace. Um, so that was very interesting to try and, you know, we have to challenge to go to a client who might be running, let's say, a Cisco product and say to that client, well, Cisco isn't yet in the marketplace. You need to use a product that with a partner that we have. The beautiful part about that, though, is that we built such good relationships with the people who are in the marketplace. And uh, that's really helped us to continue to get those, those solutions out there. The other one was we had to essentially, if you think about the clients we have who can't leave these regions, right? That limits our options for backup. Think about that because we can't just go and use a lot of the like the Microsoft type public uh, uh, Azure type backup solutions, which we'd like to use, but they're not really isolated. So we learned a lot working with our strategic partner to build a high speed uh, DR and backup solution within the islands so that we can say to the client, well, you not only are you going to run on the Azure stack and that's great and you're going to be in public Azure, but you also have a bring your own key secure backup solution that's high speed running in our data centers as well. And as Blair said, you can see from the theme, it's that end to end, right? So our challenges are to, to find our clients and, and understand what their, what their customers are trying to do because a lot of our clients are partners give them the cloud solution architecture experience and then help them to shape and reform a lot of the perceptions and technologies in their clients environments to fit within that model yeah yeah and if i if you don't mind I, i'm just going to add to two kind of things to that i think you know when we when we started this journey um you know we we came out as and we talked about this partner network um, we don't, you know, our managed service is actually Azure Stack. So Azure Stack is a service, whether it's, uh, you know, you're consuming it as, as, a, as an end client or whether we're running and operating it for you in your own data center, you know, however you choose to consume it. But I think, you know, for, for quite a while, there was a, you know, creating that per perception or, or having a number of conversations with our partners saying, we're, we're not going to compete with you. We're, think of us as like an extension of Microsoft. We're here to help you. We have the engineers, we have the sales team, we're not going to compete. Or the you know the, the the office licenses or any of that we just we're looking for people to consume Azure Stack and let us help you build those solutions for for your clients. So that was you know and that continues to be a, quite a challenge. You know people kind of go, are you really serious? You're not going to come in and bid on this? We're like, no, we're, we're I promise we're not. Um, but the other one was um, you know what as we know what it says on Azure Stack on paper um, as with anything I think it's any product when you read it it says this is what I can do. We've found some of those limits and barriers actually don't exist. It's what's built in. So you, if you use third-party products like Vic had just mentioned around Checkpoint or other light, uh, firewalls, you know, your VPN throughput gateways and these kind of things uh, goes away, you know, your 200 meg limit and these types of things. Um, it's all based on what your connectivity coming in. But it's also about, you know, Vic had touched on, on a couple there being the, the backup and, and some of the other solutions. The other one was Express Route, you know, that connectivity. So we've, we've created our own quasi kind of express route equivalent to be able to, to allow clients to get in. So again, every day you're asking the lessons learned. And we mentioned before we got on the call, every day we learn something new. There's a new challenge that we have to come up with or, or do. And, you know, that's just part of, of being on the, the forefront of technology. You, you get to be one of the ones who sit there and go, great, we have another challenge today. Billing was a huge one actually being able to build more than just IaaS, right? If you're wanting to build against the entire platform and be able to offer that to clients, you know, I don't know how many providers we went through or people, partners we've partnered with that it just didn't didn't work. Um, we now have a, a working solution. We've got a great partner we're working with, um, but um, you know, every day there's new challenges and, and that's kind of, you know, we enjoy it. As you can see, Vic and I wake up each day, we're like, right, what are we, what are we on today? You know, let's, let's get that's a break. what challenge comes today?
that would play, I was about to say, you're big Microsoft fanboys. And I, I think I think that, that that really takes us to the other part of it, which is, you know, we want to make sure that people, we want to drive Microsoft consumption. We're desperately passionate because we know how good it is. Like, you know, we drink that Kool-Aid ourselves every day. And so I think a large part of it as well is these people have relationships and they are trusted people. And that's really great. And where I really love our position is being able to go in and give them a skilled hand because this is all we do to actually make that, that experience. And we've had that come back and they've said, oh, you know, our clients are really loving this. You know, the stability is great and the performance is awesome and they, they, their costs are coming down and they're getting to reuse a lot of what we sold them before. Um, that to me is honestly why I wake up every day. I think that that is beautiful. And the Azure Stack is what's allowing us to do that because if the Azure Stack wasn't in the Caribbean, right, what you'd find is you'd find, okay, I've, we've got whatever platform we have and we're kind of trying to trying to shoo them in. But because it's fully integrated with the Microsoft journey, that experience, that fidelity is there and it gives them a seamless, pleasant experience from the moment we meet until their clients are done and everything's in support and they're just using the system reliably day in and day out. No, I, I love that, to be honest, and I love the energy and especially like how you use that and actually not like you, you really believe in these products and you really know they're working, but then you're taking that knowledge and that experience you have and enable others, right, uh, to help their customers as well. And I think that that is really a, a really powerful thing to do. Uh, and I think really important, uh, especially in these times, right? Yeah, absolutely. I agree. So uh, obviously there is a lot of exciting things we just talked about, and I'm sure there's much, much more we could talk about. But if people are watching this video and they want to know more about you and your solutions, uh, where should they go? Um, I think, uh, you know, the, the, as in this day and age, it's the website. So uh, salt.ky is our, is our website. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, I think you guys are going to share uh, the contact information for, for our team. So. Um, we'd love to hear from them. Doors always open. Um, they can also, if they're in our region, come in our office, have a coffee. Uh, we'll do our social distancing. We've got all the desks spaced out in the chairs. Um, we've got a chessboard if you like, if you like play chess. <laughs> awesome. No, thank you very much, Blair. Thank you very much, Victor. Thank you very much, TB, for for uh, adding uh, and connecting me uh, with SALT. Uh, it was absolutely fun talking to you and a lot of exciting things uh, is are happening and you're doing. So people definitely check out the link. We will put it in the description so you can learn more and contact uh, SALT to learn more about what they how they can help you with that. Uh, thank you guys for watching and hopefully see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Andrew. Thanks guys, bye. Have a good day everyone.